it was just a fantastic experience. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime thing. Uh, just can't wait to go back, to be honest. It was, uh, it's really a special place. It's, everything is so extreme, you know, it's 24 hours on a very demanding track. It's uh, very mentally demanding. I mean, we're, we're basically going at over 300 nearly the whole lap. So it's, uh, it's very special. And also just the atmosphere, it's, for me, it's the best race in the world. It's very different from what you expect. And it's an endurance race but uh, you really have to be on it all the time. Uh, not just as a driver, but also as a team. Um, it's a true endurance race. Uh, also, by the way, the track characteristics are. Uh, obviously, a lot of public road, so very fast. And in LMP2, in this, the class where we raced, uh, we did far with 300 kilometers per hour. So uh, it's, it's very challenging in many, many ways. Also, the weather has, seems to be always unpredictable. Lots of rain, so yeah, it's um, it's a true challenge. I think we had a very good potential. Uh, we, we we qualified six. Well, I qualified six. Uh, we were the best Michelin, Michelin runner, uh, and I mean, LMP2 was probably the most competitive field in Le Mans this year. There were 22 cars, uh, lots of very high-level drivers around. So to qualify there in the top six was really a very strong achievement. We had a few issues on the car quite early on in the race, which basically dropped us back quite a bit. Uh, when I got into the car, I managed to make up uh, quite a lot of time, uh, which was done actually after repairs uh, on the previous problems. So we were running quite smoothly, I think, during until late during the night. Then we started to get some new some minor issues with the car and eventually had to retire at, I think, 8.30 in the morning or something uh, with a broken fuel tank. It was very sad, obviously. I mean, you never expect these sort of things. I was actually on track when it happened. Uh, it was in, on, just after the start, we were all on slicks, then uh, it started to rain, you know, we had some drizzle and then on that particular lap it rained a bit more and actually people started to make mistakes and well, I saw the accident, I asked on the radio, is he okay and they told me that he actually got out of the car by himself and that he was perfectly fine, so uh, I, at that point in time I didn't think more of it, uh, but then when I got out of the car two hours later then the, they came with the bad news and of course it's uh, it's very difficult afterwards because Le Mans is a place where you have really long straight lines and you have a lot of time to, to think, to to do other stuff than just focusing. So uh, yeah, every time we were passing by there it was really hard not to think of it. And yeah, in the end we're doing a dangerous sport, we know it, we, we take the risk, we just tend to forget about it and we're reminded you know, when this sort of thing happened. I was in the car uh, directly after Alex and the news uh, of Alan's death came when I was in the car. So the team didn't inform me when I was driving, uh, but once I came out of the car, it was one of the first things that I heard. Almost every lap I came through Tetra Rouge, the specific corner, um, I had to think about it, which, is, which shows you, uh, I think it makes a deep impression. Uh, it made a deep impression on me, at least. And uh, uh, I knew Alan for a long time. Uh, probably longer than a lot of drivers here in PCC. I first met him in 2001 when he was doing a Formula 3 race in Germany and I went there to visit and we always stayed in touch and uh, we actually had a nice chat in Le Mans after driver's briefing talking about Erdos and uh, last year he went for drinks and dinner in Beijing after the race because his flight got delayed and he, he, he couldn't get his flight back to Denmark so yeah it's, uh, it's very Say, hard to imagine what has really happened. It's still, can't really. Yeah. You can do so much and so much more than you would expect. Uh, with the adrenaline, you can just keep on going. Uh, you don't feel tired at night. Well, sure, when you wake up after two and a half hours of sleep at three in the morning, you you don't really know where you are, and then you know you have to go in the car for the next four hours. So uh, you have to do it. But then, as soon as you're in the car, you are really awake. You are pumped up lots of adrenaline coming through your body, so, so that really keeps you awake and sharp. Uh, this year, unfortunately, we had a lot, a lot of safety cars, so when you get behind the safety cars, and suddenly everything relaxes and sort of, you kind of get tired. And, but then luckily, as soon as you start racing again, then it comes back and, and you don't feel sleepy anymore. So, so it's, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, and, and until you've done it, you can't, you can't know what it is big honor for me to join the first Chinese team ever at Le Mans. Um, so yeah, KCMG, everyone there did a great job, I think. So everyone, I think, wants to go back to have a second try and 
and not just make the finish, but finish on the podium at least.